rolling out next week. Uh, so if you earn $75,000 or less, or you're, uh, you're married uh, and earn $150,000 or less, uh, you will receive um, that direct cash aid. So $75,000, you'll receive a check for $1,200. Married, uh, you will receive $2,400. If you have uh, children, it's $500 per child. If you're a head of household and make about $112,000, you'll receive a little bit more than that. Uh, so if you have paid taxes in 2018 and 2019 and the IRS has your information uh, on direct deposit, if you usually receive your tax refunds directly from the IRS into your bank account, you will likely be in the first tranche to receive those payments. Uh, we uh, have been informed by the Treasury Department those will go out as early as next week. Okay. Uh, then the addition, additional payments will roll out over the coming weeks. We are pressing the administration to get them out as soon as possible because folks are really in the lurch. They need this cash assistance to, to weather the, the tide here. Uh, if your only source of income is Social Security, so if you're retired and Social Security is your main source of income, you will also receive the $1,200 cash assistance payment if your overall income is $75,000 or less. Uh, Treasury had uh, put out uh, an advisory last week that Social Security recipients would have to go and file a tax return. Many okay. of them don't. Uh, but we pressed the Treasury Department so that they rescinded that guidance and now Social Security recipients will not have to file any additional paperwork to receive that direct cash assistance. Uh, but it will take a little bit longer. Don't look for that in uh, accounts or in the mail over the next couple of weeks. It's likely to be uh, take a little bit longer. Then there are mm -hmm. important, uh, important initiatives for small business owners and of course, unemployment insurance that we can talk more about. Okay, and that uh, brings up one of the other questions. So if you didn't happen to file your income tax, say in 2017, 2018, so they'll need, individuals will need to file an income tax return, they can do that in order to get the stimulus check? Yes, typically, okay. uh, if you have, if you filed your taxes in 2019, uh, or this year, uh, or I believe 2018 too, they have your information and they will they will send it out. Mm -hmm. But we this is new. They, we've never right. done this before. Uh, so I want folks to feel comfortable in reaching out to my office. If you do not see that cash assistance in the mail by mid-May, uh, if you haven't received it, call and make sure. You can also go ahead and update your information with the IRS on direct deposit on your, your bank account if you feel comfortable doing that. And that may just speed that cash, cash assistance payment to you. Mm -hmm. And then real quick is just a, a reminder to our viewers that no one from the IRS will call you for information. Anyone that calls you about the stimulus checks that says you can get one quicker if you give them your information, or they're from the IRS and they need your information, hang up immediately. Any emails on that topic, just delete because you should be contacting the IRS. There's going to be a lot of scams out there and uh, they've already started. So let's talk about small businesses. What are the new small business loans that are funded and authorized by Congress to help small businesses during this time? Yeah, this is entirely new as well. The first is the Paycheck Protection Program that is available to small businesses of 500 employees or less, but sometimes if you have different locations, uh, you'll be able to qualify for those loans as well. What is unique about these uh, loans is that if you keep your employees on the payroll and keep them connected to your business, keep paying their health benefits, that these loans will turn into forgivable grants, outright grants to you, because we know that this uh, COVID-19 pandemic is unlike anything we've seen before, and you're being directed to, to stay home, and 
a lot of businesses ha have had to close up shop temporarily, and this is really hard. Uh, so we're trying to get money to you to, to weather the storm. Paycheck protection, you, it's important for you to work with your lender, your bank. A lot of the businesses that have a, a loan already with certain local banks, that's going to be your best avenue to get, uh, to get help and assistance. Uh, I know it's not perfect out there. I'm hearing from a lot of our friends and neighbors who say, but my, my lender wasn't ready to go. Mm. Remember, this, this initiative just launched over the past couple of days, and it's going to take a little bit of time to sort through it. Uh, these, the banks are going to have to get up and running. A lot of them are working at home as well. So be patient. I know, it, I know it's <laughs> difficult. There are also emergency disaster loans available. And the best resource we have here locally is the Small Business Development Center at USF. Eileen Rodriguez and mm -hmm. her entire team there can help walk you through the options. There are also emergency bridge loans that the state of Florida has available. But uh, I know folks have a lot of questions. It's very important that you gather all of your financial information together and check in with the, the SBDC, Tampa Bay Small Business Development Center at USF. They're a terrific resource to walk through all of the options. I have a toolkit on my website as well. That might be a good first stop at caster.house.gov. But we're all in this together, and we're, we want to help connect you to the right resource. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a question that I've heard a lot are for the businesses that, you know, have had to lay their employees off right away. Restaurants, is a, a, restaurants are a great example. Um, if they hire those employees back, then this can turn into a grant, correct? So That's it, correct, Mayor. Yeah. The, um, and this could be a lifeline for a lot of our small business owners mm -hmm. because they have put their heart and soul into their businesses. They're, they're loyal to their employees. I've talked to a lot of right. them as well, and it's just gut-wrenching uh, what they're going through right now. So we, we want to help, and that's the intent of the CARES Act to get resources, whether it's the cash assistance directly or it's these small business loans that can turn mm -hmm. into grants uh, or, or the unemployment insurance. That's, that's the aim, to get the money uh, back home here as quickly as possible. And with the small business loans, 501c3s are included in that, that category, correct? Yeah, let's talk about that because okay. that is entirely new uh, for the small business loans and for unemployment insurance. They've never been open to uh, gig workers, mm -hmm. uh, self-employed, uh, has not been open to nonprofits, the 501c3, so there are probably churches out there, but a lot of the nonprofits that are the essential safety net for our yeah. wonderful community. I mean, the, Tampa is a generous, thoughtful, and caring community, and one of the reasons is because of our nonprofit organization. So, yes, they qualify. Good, good. That's great information. Um, what student loan relief is available, if any? Yeah, this is a, another tough one. Um, but we've, uh, we know that students will have a very difficult time paying their student loans. Uh, so the CARES Act uh, suspended payment uh, for student loans through September 30th. If this goes on for a while, we may have to come back mm -hmm. and do more. The CARES Act also lowered the interest rate to zero on these loans. So if you want to pay, uh, if you have the ability to pay, keep paying, and that's, that's fine. But uh, for a lot of families, it's going to be very difficult to afford mm. that student loan payment. So you now have forbearance until September 30th. And the CARES Act also had a major pot of money for our public schools. So Hillsborough County Public Schools, I know you had our great yes. new superintendent mm -hmm. on. So a lot of the funds now that, that they have for technology, for nutrition, so for the free lunch and breakfast it's being uh, delivered mm -hmm. at schools and then delivered via bus routes a lot of that is coming supplementally through the cares act and um, technology so 
they have additional flexibilities and and we need to hear as well is is everything happening that should be happening what else as the congress comes back to try to look at additional emergency aid what else do we need to do okay great now uh... what should veterans know is there anything about the cares act yeah the, the Tampa is rich in, in veterans, and we love them, and <laughs> the same goes for our service members out at MacDill Air Force Base and SOCOM and CENTCOM. But the, uh, the Haley VA now has uh, additional resources to take care of vets. They have advised that before you travel out to Haley that you call in advance or you talk with your doctor. Uh, they are going to do some testing on site, uh, so you might be directed there. but. Um, we have the best VA hospital in the world. Uh, the providers there, the caregivers, are top notch. Uh, but the resources will be there if you need them. And if, if you add in the uh, first uh, emergency aid package and the CARES Act, uh, no one out there should have to worry about the cost of testing. So if you have symptoms of COVID and you you're uninsured or mm -hmm. you are insured Medicare Medicaid VA uh, TRICARE there will be no co-payments so do not be deterred from picking up the phone and calling the doctor or the community health center to say I have symptoms I think I might need a test there will be no cost in charge to that and we're going to work to make sure that all treatment for COVID is covered as well. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And remember that that um, number for Hillsborough County for the testing that, that is ongoing now is 813-272-5900. And we just received another 10,000 collection kits. And so uh, Hillsborough County EOC is looking at opening different locations in the Hillsborough County to be able to, uh, to test. So that's good. So speaking of Medicaid, what would expanding Medicaid in Florida mean during a time like this? Th this is a, a very important question. You know, the, the state of Florida, um, folks in Tallahassee are not serving uh, the state as well as they could be. And one, it's really going to show during a public health emergency like this, a pandemic, where you have the unemployment insurance website crashing because it was intentionally yeah. built to be a deterrent to helping folks. It's almost the same thing with health services under Medicaid. The state of Florida is one of only 13 states in the country that has not expanded Medicaid to the, the hardworking uh, folks who do not have private health insurance and they make uh, too much money to qualify for, for other health services. So what this means is that we're paying our billions in tax money, sending it to Washington and just letting it sit there or it goes to other states. And what that has left is about 800,000 Floridians without insurance without Medicaid health services and that's costing us billions and billions of dollars so that's our tax money we should be bringing it home this would help our hospitals uh, this would help our doctors our nurses the most important takeaway is that people should have health coverage mm -hmm. great that we're paying for testing great we might cover treatment but in the end we need to work towards universal health coverage uh, whether that's the, the Medicare for All debate or the uh, public option, at the very least, we should be expanding Medicaid and bringing our tax dollars home. Then what that does over time, you have a healthier population and you're uh, more able to respond to a pandemic. We're going to make sure that the resources flow through Medicaid, but if the state of Florida doesn't take them and put them to work uh, for our families, then, then we're in a world of hurt. Yeah. So where can our neighbors and families find more information about um, the relief? So you said it, you want to repeat your website and then some of the others that, that may be I think you'll available. like it. It has kind of a ring to it. Uh, <laughs> Caster.house.gov. Uh, there are resources online there. I have a, a family toolkit. It, it goes over. And then I can't, for our small business owners, if you're self-employed, uh, gig worker, wait, go to the SBDC Tampa Bay. 
Uh, they'll have some, they've got some great information as well. They are very busy, but they have a, 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 just a crack team that is ready to help. They know this community. They can work through all the nuances. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, it says, uh, this is from Charlie Frago at Tampa Bay Times. Can Congresswoman Castor give any indication of how likely it is for cities under 500,000 to get direct aid in future stimulus measures? Yeah, we're working on that right now, and I think it's, it's fairly likely because there are a lot of us around the country that are uh, in agreement that that needs to happen. But uh, right off the bat, the, through the, what the CARES Act set out through the state and local stabilization fund was $150 billion to go out across the country. We estimate the state of Florida should receive about $8 billion. Hillsborough County will receive a sizable chunk as well. And they should be in coordination now with cities like Tampa and other municipalities across the state to help them, to partner with them. I mean, the city here is laying out a lot of resources mm -hmm. and expending a lot of funds. Now, they will get paid through, um, just like a hurricane had hit, through their FEMA disaster loans, and that will be a lot of money. They will also get money through revenue streams that already exist, like CDBG, that came through for the city of Tampa last week, 3.5 million, Hillsborough County, 6.3 million. They will also continue to receive additional grants uh, for housing, for homelessness. Uh, so it's not like they didn't read the, the city of Tampa is not receiving anything, but boy, it sure would be nice to receive some of the stabilization dollars that are the most flexible and can be put to work right away. Yeah, that um, would be wonderful, and, and we are certainly fighting for that. If they used... Uh, the previous census information, there would only be 33 cities throughout the United States that fit that half a million population. But I've been told that they're using estimated uh, census data, which I'm sure raises that number, but I don't think includes any cities in uh, the state of Florida with the exception of Jacksonville, which is a city-county um, consolidation. So here's a question from M. Woods on Twitter. It says, Will first responders be tested, and if so, when? So right now, we are testing uh, first responders that are exhibiting symptoms, but as I talked about on, on uh, one of our previous programs with Dr. Lockwood, we talked about the antibody testing, and that we, we talked about how uh, COVID is, is uh, so easily transmitted but also the fact that in a lot of cases, it's silent. So you can have it and be spreading it to others and not even know that you have it. And so what we want to do, we have ordered uh, antibody tests for all of our first responders, medical personnel. So a number of frontline workers, all of our, our city workers that have to be out there on the front lines. So we've ordered those and we're gonna give those to all of the, the um, frontline uh, essential workers, and if it comes back that they have had COVID and have already gone through it without their, own, their knowledge or any symptoms, then they will be immune and they'll be able to, to work uh, helping our citizens and especially in the healthcare uh, workers, they'll be able to go into the hospitals and into these uh, areas to care for high risk patients. So that really will be, um, a blessing for us but we have been testing first responders as necessary one of the things that's interesting is with our paramedics uh, and firefighters is that they come in contact with so many individuals that have communicable diseases that um, there's a theory not proven that they have a, a much uh, stronger immune system to different types of, of uh, communicable uh, viruses and diseases, but we're definitely looking out for all of our essential personnel because they're the ones on the front line uh, getting it done every single day. So very happy about that. Let's see, says this is from Sarah Marvel. Says when everything opens up, will it be all at once or a layered reopening? I say we cut the ribbon and just open it up. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how we can do a layered reopening, but um, you know, it 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 will take time to get 
uh, individuals back out in in mass. I think that that will uh, be its own layered reopening as opposed to something that is is um, initiated by us. Uh, I think we have to listen to the public health experts mm -hmm. um, and we're fortunate here in Tampa to have an outstanding uh, College of Public Health at the University of South Florida and all of USF Health. They, they're at they have the cutting edge research and knowledge, so I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I yep. listen to the experts. Right, and uh, Dr. Lockwood, I was on a, a panel, small business panel with him yesterday afternoon, and he said with the modeling, again, this is something that's modeled, so it's not definitive, but he said that uh, it looked as if our cases, that, that we would be able to flatten that curve, and that, um, in his opinion, we wouldn't have our hospitals overwhelmed like mm -hmm. some of the other cities have had. So that's a tribute to our community and everybody taking the uh, safer at home and the social distancing uh, seriously. There have been a lot of articles recently that talked about the disproportionate effect of uh, COVID, the, the coronavirus, on minority communities, mm -hmm. and specifically on African American and uh, and Black communities, and so that's something that we need to take very very seriously, and you know pay attention to individuals that are coming in the homes of those that are high risk. Again, elderly and those with what they term as comorbidity, and those can be things like uh, anything that that. Um, uh, diminishes your immune system, or uh, hypertension, diabetes, those types of, of um, health concerns that can really make you more susceptible to the effects of coronavirus, including asthma, those types of things. And there's not definitive science on exactly what it is that can uh, cause you to have a more severe reaction to the coronavirus. I mean, there are things out there all the way from high blood pressure medicine to um, individuals who vape. So there's no definitive science to that yet. So as I always say, just uh, assume that you have it and then act accordingly. I think that's uh, the best advice that anyone can have. But we do need to pay attention to those that are in your proximity that, that would have those health concerns and that would put them at high risk. So here's one I like is paddle boarding. This is from uh, Rabbi Raubi Marie on Twitter. And it says, is paddle boarding or kayaking allowed during the current social distancing guidelines? If so, are there restrictions or best practices? Yes, they're allowed. And the restrictions are that you stay at least six feet away from each other. And uh, I would say a best practice is don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> That would probably be the best bet that I could. So here's some more social media questions. Um, we are a commercial real estate firm based in downtown Tampa. I've submitted an application to the Paycheck Protection Program online. How long do you foresee it taking to receive the PPP relief? And this is Jeff Lamb on Twitter. Jeff, that's a great question. This is a brand new initiative. Uh, just started on Friday. We're in the third day. Uh, this is the initiative to help small businesses stay connected with their employees through those uh, loans that you work with your banks or lenders or credit unions. And if you keep your employees on, they will uh, turn this loan into an outright grant to help you weather the storm of this public health emergency. We do not know how long it is going to take. It is the intent of the Congress that that money speed out to small businesses all across the country. Uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on it, and I would ask you to call my office so that we can keep track. I, in fact, for any of the small business owners out there, I'd really like to hear as you uh, make application how difficult it is for you. I understand some banks were ready to go, some were not. I need to understand your experience so that I can relay to bankers and the Treasury and uh, everyone that's involved in this, the Small Business Administration, uh, what else they need to be doing right away. So please be in contact with me on that. Excellent. Uh, will non-citizens that pay taxes receive a stimulus check? And that's Jose Rangel. 
No, the answer is you have to be a citizen to receive the direct cash assistance. Okay. Um, so as representative, Congresswoman Kathy Castor and others proposing massive per capita block grants to states as their multi-trillion dollar bailout, and that's from Brian Schatz on Twitter. So usually when I hear the term uh, per capita block grants, that's mm -hmm. in the context of Medicaid health services. Uh, so we have, when it comes to, to Medicaid, we have now provided the state of Florida a higher matching rate. So they have to take advantage of that through their, the federal state partnership and pr provide the health services. When they do that, they will get more money. If you mean the new state and local stabilization fund, that $150 billion that will go out to states and local communities, uh, that is a new one-time public health emergency stabilization fund. And we talked about that, how we want to get it uh, some of those flexible dollars down to communities that, like the city of Tampa that have a population of 500,000 or less. And, and I'm hopeful that we will do that, but this needs to happen right away. And the state of Florida uh, needs to work with the city of Tampa and other cities, as does Hillsborough County, uh, because we're all in this together. Amen. Um, let's see. Will an update be given on what number someone is on in the wait list to process an unemployment application? That's Maddie on Twitter. And that's a, a state uh, question. And I know that they're working on that system for individuals to... Uh, Can we talk about unemployment, sure. though? Oh, that'd be great. Because uh, I'm very concerned that because the state of Florida is the stingiest in the entire country when it comes to unemployment, insurance. Uh, it's going to be a much tougher climb for us out of any recession and recovery. Right now the state of Florida provides 12 weeks of unemployment compensation if you lose your job or you're fur furloughed. Most states provide 26 weeks. Uh, the state of Florida provides $275 per week. Most states are far beyond that amount. In the CARES Act now, what the Congress did was uh, say, okay, states, we're going to give you and each uh, unemployed worker an additional $600 per week for four weeks to help get us through this public health emergency. The state of Florida hasn't fixed its system, though, to make that work for people mm -hmm. who are newly unemployed. We also said, okay, gig workers, self-employed, you now are eligible for unemployment insurance before you, you, were, you weren't. The state needs to fix that. They're not letting people actually apply yet, even though we've said, here's the money. And we've provided extra money for them to fix their system. Now, Governor DeSantis yesterday said he's hiring and they're working on it. But here's what else needs to happen. The governor of the state of Florida has emergency powers where he can say, you know what, this is a public health emergency unlike any we've ever seen. I will raise the uh, wages, the allowable wages from 275 a week. And in fact, I'll extend the weeks and I'll, I'll match what most states are doing now. And I'll go to 26 weeks and that way that federal money on top of that will really be meaningful. We're pressing the governor to do that. Our state legislators are doing it. But in the meantime, it's they've got to fix the system and uh, I was on the a call yesterday with state senator Janet Cruz and other state representatives they're so frustrated now they're printing the unemployment insurance application and leaving them outside their offices for people to pick up fill out and mail in because the computer system is down mm. and it's broken that's not acceptable and we're gonna have a much tougher climb out of this emergency unless they get it fixed. And $275, I mean, my goodness. I don't even know what that comes down. That cannot even come down to minimum wage. So that, yeah, that's a, an incentive just to, just to throw up your hands and not even go through it. Mm. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I think Andrew Rosenblum needs to talk to his parents. It says, I'm a college student, but I'm listed as a dependent on my parents' taxes. Because of this, I'm not eligible for the $1,200 stimulus. Are there any talks of including dependents on a future bill? Well, the dependents are included now. <laughs> Sounds like his parents are going to get that uh, 
five hundred dollar stimulus. So. Right. I think so. Yes. Okay. We are told that uh, SBA benefits. This is this is what you've just talked about. This is from uh, Brian Slowick. Um, SBA benefits are available at banks, but banks say they have no direction on how to distribute the money or are turning businesses away. How does one get the money, and have they run out? They have not run out mm -hmm. uh, here on Tuesday afternoon, and if they do, uh, we're going to come back and help again. There was good news yesterday because the Federal Reserve announced that and, and provided great uh, comfort to our banks and credit unions, the Federal Reserve announced that they will come in and support the banks, make sure that they have the liquidity, the money they need to be uh, lending out uh, to our small business owners. Uh, the Treasury Department this afternoon uh, issued additional guidance to banks, so many of them at the end of last week uh, were, were unsure what to do, but they are receiving additional guidance. Uh, so we want to get this money out to our small business owners. I know it is the most difficult time. You put your heart and soul into your, your businesses. You love and care for your employees. You, you want this to work. I want it to work. Let's all stick with it. And if you are having problems with the SBA, the IRS, any of those federal agencies, please call my office at 871 2817 uh, or go to caster.house.gov, send me an email. I'd really want to know uh, if it's working, how it's working, uh, and if you need additional help. Yeah, and this, you know, as, as stated, this is the first time we've ever done anything like this. And really to get the federal government is, you know, a huge, huge ship. To, so to get all of these parts moving in one direction is difficult. And I must say, very commendable that everyone has come together in such a short time frame when these these types of initiatives usually take you know, a year or more to get moving so a lot of patience I know there's a lot of frustration out there and and um, you should be you know very frustrated and, and anxious especially if you have a business that as Congresswoman Castor says you have worked and put your heart and soul into but know that we're all working together to answer these questions and to try to uh, fix the glitches. And tomorrow we'll be having a expert, small business expert, uh, on the show to help out answer right. questions as well. And then on Thursday we're going to have a labor attorney that will be able to answer questions about eligibility and a lot of those uh, more specific questions that, that our listeners may have. So next is what's being done about non-essential businesses that are ignoring the Florida Safer at Home order and what can employees do if their company is violating the order. I, I have personally received several of these complaints and we have dealt with them. This is from men on Twitter. What I would suggest is call our um, call center at 833-TPA-INFO uh, and give the information anonymously there, and then we will go out and contact those businesses. And we've gone out and talked to a number of businesses in our community that aren't uh, practicing the, the adequate social distancing. But those in, this, in the big picture are few and far between. The majority of the citizens, the majority of the businesses understand the significance of this and are um, doing what, what is necessary. So. But give us a call, and we will certainly take care of it. All right. Um, that was another question about the unemployment. Uh, okay. What is Congress doing, going to do? Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. I'm a sole proprietor owning a business for myself. I've lost all perspective, business opportunities, my prospective customer base, it's from schools, preschools, et cetera, uh, which are hit with the current situation. Uh, what relief options can I expect? Well, don't give up hope. The um, school districts, the community colleges, the universities are receiving some additional dollars. Maybe there is an opportunity for you there. The CARES Act also provided, by the way, additional dollars for our child care centers. 
through the Child Care Development Block Grant. Those are monies that will go to the state of Florida and the state of Florida will disperse them out to make sure that um, our child care centers do not close during this uh, pandemic, that they can retain their workers. There are a lot of uh, child development centers that are taking care of workers who are essential and are still at work. Um, so that's, that's one through uh, our Early Learning Coalition. If you're a, a child care provider working with the Early Learning Coalition, they should have the dollars to keep you afloat for a, for a while longer. All right. Uh, what's being done about rent and mortgage? If we're unable to pay, are we going to get evicted? Uh, will there be some sort of state or local ordinance that keeps that from happening uh, while we are under lockdown? And that's uh, from Victoria Bowers on Facebook. I know that that's been passed at the state level uh, that the evictions have, have been halted, but prior to that, Sheriff Chronister got with the chief judge and um, they put a moratorium on evictions uh, as well. And, and as I've said in the past, uh, dealing with this particular issue is to just talk to your landlords, you know, be upfront about it and say, I lost my job. A lot of the uh, landlords are using the deposit, security deposit as a rent payment. But um, yeah, just understand that you are you are protected from this. And if you have a federally backed mortgage, there are a lot of mortgages out there that are FHA backed and you do have uh, forbearance for a certain period of time. Okay, and the, the um, very last question is about uh, voting. It says, uh, will Representative Kasser commit to a national vote by mail? I'm, I think we're gonna have to look at it. In the CARES Act, we provided some money uh, for elections and we pressed uh, to have a lot more money out there because we're going to have to alter our elections. The primary election here in Florida is in August. That's really right around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want Craig Latimer to have the resources necessary to conduct a safe mm -hmm. election. So uh, I, I love the vote by mail. We, it needs to, yes, go nationwide so people have that option. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, too, for fighting the good fight for everyone that's been affected uh, by this virus. Uh, we have a long road ahead of us, but as we've always known, Tampa is the greatest city in the world, and we are great because we all come together when there is a need uh, there's an issue that needs to be addressed, and we have never seen an issue like this before, but working together, we will be able to come through it. So I thank you again for all that you've done, and uh, thank you for clearing up so many of the questions and concern about, concerns about this federal funding. Well, thank, thank you. you, Mayor, for your outstanding leadership, and we have your back, Tampa, and all of our neighbors. We're going to get through this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, remember tonight, 6 o'clock, dance like nobody's looking so get out there and enjoy yourself you know everybody needs a little bit of relief right now uh, remember the next couple of days we're going to have a small business expert and then we're going to have a labor attorney uh, here as well congresswoman castor talked about the 3.5 million dollars that we've received uh, here in the city of tampa and we're using a portion of that a small portion of that uh, to be able to house 100 individuals that were previously homeless, and we have a location where they have uh, medical care if needed, they have showers, they have laundry, and also we're working in partnership with Catholic Charities, and Catholic Charities is working with the individuals while they're at this location to get them back up on their feet and moving towards becoming productive members of our communities. And we'll have uh, Maggie, who heads that program, She'll be our guest uh, this week as well. So thank you all very, very much for watching. And remember, stay home. Thank you. was the third confirmed death of coronavirus in Hillsborough and our thoughts and prayers go out to 